Dapio was always an interesting case to me when I would first read the manga, and I'm happy to finally see him here adapted into the anime. Though the approach taken here for his character is a bit different this time around because it wasn't a one-to-one -one adaptation, but instead better, in my opinion. This introduction filled with extreme tension is one of my favorite character introductions when it comes to Jojo, and I'd like to show why. Now, I'm sure for those that read the manga, it was a bit surprising to see Dapio's backstory this early. For those that watch the anime only, it's just basically not supposed to show up for a while. I'm not going to specify on where since this video doesn't really call for spoilers. When first watching, I was genuinely surprised as to why I'm seeing it this early, but after the episode, I had time to recollect some thoughts. I was thinking about how much tension and suspense there was in the episode, and then I looked to the execution. By bringing the introduction now, this execution has a Hitchcock technique going for it. What to call it, I'll say the bomb under the table technique. Film heads probably understand where I'm getting at now. The premise of this technique is that giving the audience information is a large element of suspense. Now I'm going to be using his scenario to show a point. Say you have a group of people, they're all casually talking about who knows what, maybe some food, and then a bomb goes off. Us as the viewers will have about 15 seconds of suspense because of the shock from it. Now give us the same scenario except this time tell us that there's a bomb under the table and it's set to blow 15 minutes from now. Now everything the group of people are talking about is completely insignificant because hey there's a bomb under the table and they don't know. So from the time that we were informed to when the bomb goes off, we're filled with suspense. That's what we have with Dapio. Since we're given this mysterious backstory that slaps us with elements of suspense and tension before we even get to see Dapio in action, it establishes this crown to the audience that whoever this person is, we should be weary. Side note. You and I'm, I'm playing. I'm, if people know the song, that's cool. Uh, I would like to actually go about Dabio's backstory here a lot more because the mystery of it is something that contributes massively towards the entirety of his introduction. But for the points made and to be made in this video, going about the past and expanding on it isn't as necessary in this specific video. So maybe later. Now, with the history of this character in mind, we go about first seeing him in action. The audience now has a sense similar to uneasiness for this character, and now we see what the character has become, but it's odd. The first thing we see him do is save a child, or well, sort of, because the kid didn't need any saving, so Dapio was in a worse position for it. And for the entirety of the scene, it looks like the world was against Dapio. So with what we're seeing the world do to him, that uneasiness begins to grow because we've already seen that there's a dark side to him, and with this dark side being in mind, we're sort of waiting for a snap. And the anticipation of the snap is such a huge thing for suspense. We anticipate it because of the backstory that we were just given, but now there's so much going for it. The presence of it. This instability we have to watch. When will it happen? How will it happen? Will someone avoid it after getting so close to it? And the weight of it all just increases as we go on. Every attribute of this can be referred to an article titled Toward a General Psychological Model of Tension and Suspense. In there, it says that there's about six key components of tension and suspense, and in Dapio's introduction, we're covering about five, though it's all made a lot more powerful when we get to the catalyst of Dapio's snap, and that's just a man who's trying to do his job. The fortune teller here is what ties it all together. The music has taken a shift and now there's a standoff between the two. One man with the ability to completely take apart the other, and the other man being Dapio. The rubber band being stretched until it snaps. That's who Dapio is right now. Each little line of information being given by the fortune teller is a stab at Dapio and what he is, and this gives us as the audience some tension because of the lack of control in this situation. Dapio keeps generalizing each piece of information being given to us, which causes the fortune teller to go even further and press Dapio. This buildup keeps raising and raising after he keeps on prodding Dapio with these questions, and you can see it in the animation that this is a pressing situation, and someone here is not safe, and we know who. We're 
tied so close to the fortune teller because on one hand, we want more information on this character because a lot of things here are lining up with him and the boss. But on the other hand, we want him to quit all the questioning because something here isn't normal and it doesn't look like he's anywhere near safe. He's poking at the lion in its den and all we can do is sit back in suspense waiting for when the snap happens or if it happens. It also doesn't help that Dapio's response to him have these this positive energy to it because we know that this character isn't really normal, so the cheeriness is nearing uncomfortable. Then, we get to the best part, the disconnect. The fortune teller's fortune on Dapio looking for his daughter confuses everyone involved here. The fortune teller, Dapio, and us. Him and Dapio even look at each other, both being in confusion because Dapio doesn't even look like he'd have kids, let alone one that's 15 or even higher. But this disconnect is what causes the snap. Well, both snaps. The fortune teller is so certain of his fortune that he requires reassurance by checking out Dapio's palm, so now he's overstepping his physical boundaries. Now instead of asking for money, he's offering to pay Dapio to ease his mind and understand this enigma of a case that is Dapio. He's getting aggressive, he's pressing, he's pressing, and then finally, the snap. I'm gonna break character for a second in this video. Holy shit, I love when they do that double voice shit. I loved it when they did it with like fucking Vegito. I, I love it in here. Cause this transition to where it's Dapio and then both, and then who we think is, uh, no spoilers, but that person, it's crazy. And I love it. We were right. This character is not normal, but that's also terrible because since our suspicions were confirmed, that means that this fortune teller is as good as dead. His passion of his work and personal interests is what got him killed, but he does get what he wants. And then the icing on the cake for this scene, he fully confirms what Dapio is once he gets his palm, and we have our suspicion confirmed when he has his own palm. Now that what we're hinted at is true, we still hold tension because of this character. Originally, the potential of it was a major contributor, but since we know that it exists now, we must be vigilant anytime we see the character. Now, after all that's happened and seeing the child, Dapio speaks to the bug that was sought after by the kid. Everything being said sounding like what he'd say to the kid instead. I believe that this is either Dapio indirectly speaking to the kid, or it's the fact that it doesn't really matter to him. Bug or someone that's not really a threat, it's all the same thing to the case that is Dapio. Thank you all for watching. I had this video out after the next episode came out, which is it's like people are probably expecting right after the other one, but no, no, I ain't got time like that. But you know, I'm also not like the video was finished, but I'm not giving a chance to upload it on this day. Like, come on, I had to do it for the people. Uh, I thought both episodes were amazing, and right now I'm honestly happy that there's a recap episode, I think, next week, because, man, I need to get my stuff together. Uh, I'm almost at 100k, so thank you all again. I already, I think I talked about in the last one how much I love y'all and loyalty and stuff like that, because that was the topic of the last video. But yeah, uh, since I'm almost at 100k, if you all have any videos that you want me to see, uh, that you want to see to highlight that something that just like a big ol' big old video that i can just cover because i hit 100k or something like that uh, i'll see what i can do I, I i recently made a third channel for my twitch stuff and i recently finished up two scripts for my second channel and i'm slowly reclaiming time i'll link the new channel for now because i'll be uploading all my past stuff and i have um I played Pokemon Platinum like way back and y'all can see that type of stuff. And it's a, I also have a Pokemon Platinum related video coming up in my second one. So yeah, thank you all so much for all of this. It's ridiculously insane to be in the position that I'm in. And I, I really want to do something that you guys uh, 
want. Like it's 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 a huge thing for me. It's like whatever you guys have in mind, do that and some some some. But yeah. Hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. So until then, peace out and Godspeed. <laughs>